Today we will discuss how to plot in pointers. Now, plotting has been a very important agenda of every data science project. And uh, we always want to plot before we do any kind of processing. Because plotting is the only way a person, a human can understand what data is actually telling you. And it gives you the insight clearly so you can take good decision when you're doing the encoding technique, when you're doing some other techniques, or maybe you want to drop a column or keep the column. In any scenario, plotting is the key. Now, what is plotting and why to plot and how to plot in partners? We are going to cover these three agenda today. So now to in, do the plotting in partners, what we are doing, we are importing partners actually. So we are saying import partners as PD. Once we are done with that, we will import NumPy too. Now NumPy has no role in the plotting part, but what we are doing, we are creating a dummy data set from NumPy. You may use rand in for that. You may use random for that. Uh, this random will give you 10 random values and this rand in will give you 10 random values between the range that you have decided. You may decide any range from one to 10 to one to 100, any range is okay. And you can get the values accordingly. Now I have created a data set and I'm going to use rand random and rand random and rand random for all the four columns. You can see that I'm getting 10 values randomly in the all the four columns you can use rand int if you want to and you will get different kind of values too okay so what i'm going to do now i'm going to run this cell here we have imported and let me show you how what kind of output you can expect when you use these two now rand random will give you a range of zero to one which is a good thing uh, small values are easier to plot and easier to you know study a bigger value will require a more fluctuation in the data set because as you can see that we are having four as the smallest value and 82 is the highest value. So it will be a very fluctuating value. I can give you the example from both the ways and there is no issue with that. So we can work like this or you can use them. Whichever you like more, use that. What I'm doing next is I'm going to create a data set. I'm creating a dictionary as you can see and I'm having this value. Let me make it readable so i have these four values back to back as you can see i'm giving me getting k1 k2 k3 and k4 i'm creating additionally and i'm having np rand 10 in every value okay you may also have a combination of rand and random but guys again remember the range is 0 to 1 and 1 to 100 heavy fluctuation is there in the range i use pd dot data frame and create the data if i run the cell you will see I'm getting a random value, guys. Again, because it is random value, your value and my value will be very different. If I run it again, the value will change drastically. Okay, because these are random values. Now, number of plot on the ways we can plot in pandas are very high. You can use line, you can use bar, bar horizontal, hist, box, KDE curve, density curve, area plot, pi plot, scatter plot, and hexagon. Now, hexabin and scatter are one and the same thing. Uh, we can get the idea from both. And pi plot is, I hope you all know, there's like area charts. And density and KDE are exactly the same thing. And box plot, histogram are used very frequently in the plotting part. Now, let's move forward. Instead of talking about the plots, let's see how the plot really works. So, what I'm going to do, guys, whenever you use the column, so I'm using the K column, okay? Data dot K means I will get this column. And what I'm doing, I'm plotting the data. When I use just plot, it plot me a line chart. When I run this, okay, you will get a line chart like this. Okay, you may do some editing on that too. You can have the legend true. Legend true will give you a proper box at the right top or bottom side that which uh, which column we are picking and what is the name. So I'm picking two columns here. Look, I'm taking K and K2. Okay. And using the same dot plot and giving legend two. Uh, when I give legend two, you can see that the right bottom, I'm getting K blue line and K two as orange line. So K two and K uh, are being compared together. You may have three or four lines too. That is also okay, guys. You can use alpha for transparency too. If you are uh, aware of alpha, it is, it is used for giving you the transparency. The range is from zero to one. Now moving forward, guys, we have K plot and I'm giving a bar chart. Now guys, notice that I can also use dot here and look for the charts that we have, okay? 
that is also a practical thing there is nothing wrong with that and giving it like this is also okay so we have bar uh, bar h box density kd and all the plots we have talked about right here you can pick any plot and just give the value inside and you get the output but now what i'm doing instead of uh, giving it like that i can also do it by giving the kind now you just need to change the kind equals to and whatever plot you're looking for write that name now this is a keyword argument that you're giving if you don't want to do this you can use dot operator and give the bar chart there too both are the same thing and give you the same result i'm running this you will get a bar chart where you can compare the value of 0 to 9 values of k and which value is higher which value is smaller it is giving you that as the range is from 0 to 1 this is the left side y axis is having the range of 0 to 1 okay okay this is your value and this is the sequence of the value that you have you have 10 values it is giving you the output of each value accordingly now if i want to use a, a pie chart i will again change kind equals to pie and simple and straightforward guys for that particular column i will get a pie chart pie chart is strongly recommend for the values which are only four or five uh, that is maximum usually it is preferred to two or three categories uh, giving 10 categories does not make much sense as you can see they are uh, all hush for share so it's very hard to read exactly what they are actually giving and what value they are actually plotting for you. You may also compare two or three columns again and again by subplotting and doing it in, a, in an integrated form. But this is uh, again out of the scope of this video. But I hope you get the idea how to give the pie chart. Same thing if you want to have a bar chart. Okay, you will say kind equals to bar chart. Legend is true here, and I will get the k bar and here now horizontal and the normal bar chart are same. They are just horizontal and the vertical direction. Usually, by default, it's vertical. When you want horizontal, we have to give B A R H is the name. Name is everything, guys. If you remember the name, there will be no issue. Then we have kind equals to area. We are picking the area chart, and area chart will give you the clarity. If you just see the chart and the legend here, it is saying that blue is K, orange is K two, and green is K three, red is K four, and you can see that I am having four values. Area wise covering the things. You all the spikes that you see are actually the values and the values fluctuation at this position because the range is from 0 to 1, it is all fluctuating at that area because it's stack chart, area chart, it is stacking over each other one by one and giving you the value. Now, if we want to give a lot of details, guys, again. Pandas allow you to modify your plot with the name, style, legend, grid, font size you want to change, Y label you want to give, X label you want to give, the figure size you want to change. You can do everything here. I'm not doing those things here because I don't want to make it very complex to understand. But if you want to change it, you can see that in this plot, I'm giving a title. Okay, I'm giving a style that is red dash dot. Means I want red color dash and dot is the line style. Then I'm giving the legend equals to true. I'm giving the grid equals to two. True. It will give me a box check uh, pattern at the background. Then font size is equals to 10. Y label is equals to total. And uh, X label is equals to month wise. Figure size is equals to 15 comma 3. When I run the cell, you will notice that I have multiple lines plotted together in the red color and the uh, dashed color, dash and dot. And all lines are compared to each other. You can see that here I'm having this K, K2, K3, and K4 all together and giving me different different values. Okay. Now you may have different colors, you may have different values too. Again, you can modify it to a great extent as much as you want. I hope this plot gave you the clarity that how much you can modify and how much you can control a plot in a pandas. You can control it exactly like matplotlib in a single line. Again, you need to understand the titles and everything. What are the parameters? What are the keyword arguments? You have to know all those things before you can plot it. But just a little R&D on this, you can easily plot like this. Then we also have something called box plot. Box plot are amazingly good when you want to find the outline. Now I want to have the detail of a particular column. When I plot this, you can see I'm getting all the plots clearly. The average is the center line. So the green line that you see in the center is the mean 50% of the data. And above and the blue is Q1 and Q3. So intercontinental range is the box itself. And whatever value which is the outliner will be shown away from this box. This particular line that you see, it will be shown away from it. 
But right now, over the range is zero to one. There is no offload in the data set, so you don't see anything like that here. Then we have KD curve. Now, guys, KD curve and density curve are exactly same. There is no difference between these two. They give you the same detail that how much density of data we have at that particular area. So between say twenty five to fifty, how much density is there of the data? Green has the highest density of data. Blue has little bit. Blue density is more towards point fifty to seventy five, and orange density is more towards zero to two five. And uh, for red, it's it's it is divided into two parts. You can see this two slopes coming out. This is how it is divided. So this is how data is distributed properly here. You can see the same kind of plot by using this curve. Okay, both will give you the same answer, same reply, and same kind of output. Give you the same detail. So very soon you will see that uh, one of them is going to be removed, as it is. Gave, it always gave you in the warning that one of the curve will be removed very fast. Okay. So guys, then we have scatter plot and hexabin. Scatter plot and hexabin. Again, okay, guys, scatter plot is amazingly good to find out plot outliners too. Uh, to find the outliners, we have four parameters: z score, this box plot, interquartile range, and scatter plot. So box plot you have already seen. This is a scatter plot. You can just pick one column, and for that column you can do the scatter plotting, or you can just pick two columns and you can do the scatter plotting between these two columns. Okay, by doing this you get the idea. Notice I am giving some parameters here, guys. In scatter plot and hexabin you have to give some parameters. You have to define that what is your x, what is your y axis. Then you have to define the kind which is compulsory for each plot. And look, I'm giving something called s equals to hundred. What is this s? S is nothing. It is actually the size of the plot. If I just go ahead and change this value and run it again, you will see the box, the plot size, the dot size has improved to a great extent. You may also control the marker design that you want to give. You can give a star. You can give other values. You can give a triangle. All are okay here. This is your scatter plot, and if you go for hexabin, it's quite simple and straightforward. Again, I am giving this hexabin, and you can see that I am getting this plot. Now we have something called grid size. Think of grid size as guys, we are zooming in and zooming out. If I make it fifty, you will see that I am getting a small dot. It's like zooming out of it. If I am giving it five and removing this, you will see that it is getting really big. Okay. It's like zooming in to a great extent. So, exabin basically in the grid size means that you are increasing the grid size. Guys, think of it as pixels. You are increasing the pixel, you are decreasing the pixel, and that is how you get the value. Again, I am saying just think of it. I am not saying it is exactly like that. Grid size is itself a terminology that we are using here. Then, let me make it back to ten, which was a very decent plot. Okay, this is not detecting any plot and just showing all the values for me. Now moving forward, guys, what we have, we have a plot, which is a bigger plot of this hexagon plot. What I'm doing here, n equals to 500, df equals to pd dot data frame, cod x. I'm giving the random and random number, uniform condition, giving minus three to three. Then np dot random and uniform again. I'm giving the data set unit which is uniform, and I'm getting 30 to 50. Size is n. So size is and is what I'm defining, guys. That means I'm saying that I want 500 dots, 500 dots for each. Then observation is and then random and int one to five sizes and so 500 values between the range of one to five. Then I'm giving ax equals to df dot plot hexabin. Okay, this is my plot basically that I'm going to get and I'm giving x coordinate y and c. All the three values has been given, which is in the data frame basically. And after giving this these three values, okay, which is guys again, I'm using df dot. It is inside the data frame. We just need to define the observation, the, the three columns that we are going to use. Then we have grid size. I'm giving 15. You can give bigger values, smaller values to see the difference. Because we have a lot of value, we can give very small number too, and it will still be visible. Then we have C map, and I'm giving a color here. When I run this. You will get something like this. This is your grid. And if I change the grid size, I just make it 25, 35. Okay. You will see the difference here. You're getting smaller and smaller. Your size is really big. If I make it 5, it will be very hard to understand what we have here. So 15 is a decent number. That is why I've kept it here 15. You can keep it 25 or 32. That is also okay. But more than that and lower than that is not going to give you a decent problem. 
So how we decide the data sets, guys? We should be able to see all the plots that we have, and the clarity in the vision should be there. We should not be, you know, have to zoom it again and again to see what is going on. We can also increase the size if the values are too big. Uh, actually, you should have always increased the size when you have 500 dots. So it's better to have a bigger size plot. It gives you more clarity and the clear picture of what we have. So guys, we have covered hexabin, scatter plot, box plot, okay, density curve, KDE curve. We have covered this plot where we have different different parameters given to it, area plot, hexa horizontal bar and pie chart vertical bar chart, line plot, okay? And also comparing two values inside the line plot to get the idea. Okay? Same thing can be happen and can be achieved by doing in the bar chart. You can have two bars together to get the idea. So that will be all for the plotting part, guys. This is all for the video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.